If I die, I'll be ready for Jesus. You have a granny on your campus right now driving in a sports car, chasing after the kids. Pedro Ruiz, a 22-year-old guy, attempted to record a YouTube stunt that was beyond insane and honestly quite dumb. Pedro wanted to kick off his channel with, in his own words, a bang. So he planned a ridiculous stunt where he would ask his girlfriend to shoot him in the chest while his only defense would be a book. The point of the stunt was for him to demonstrate that a 50 caliber bullet cannot penetrate the book. While it doesn't make any sense why someone would even attempt to do this, Pedro was still convinced he'd be safe. The point of this video is, I really just want to see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through a book. I just want to see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through a book. Okay, but what's even that's, crazy? That's the point of this video. The ultimate, the ultimate test to see if this 50 caliber bullet will go through a book is, I'm just not going to just set it and just shoot it. No. I'm going to stand behind it. And Mona Lisa is going to shoot it. Hoping she hits the book and not me. The most trustworthy person that I trust in this world is my girlfriend, Mona Lisa. Initially, his girlfriend Mona Lisa was completely against the idea. However, Pedro constantly backed her, even showing her a book where a bullet didn't fully pierce a hardcover book. At the time, Paris was seven months pregnant with her second child. She repeatedly warned Pedro about how bad the idea was. However, Pedro was adamant. I may fail, but if I fail, I want to die trying. Eventually, she gave in, firing at him and immediately ending his life on the spot. Unfortunately, the book couldn't save him. While the county attorney refused to release the video of Pedro's final moment for understandable reasons, a transcript of the audio revealed exactly how everything unfolded. The transcript reads, Babe, I'm not doing this. I can't. If I kill you, what's gonna happen to my life? Like, no, this isn't okay. To which he replied, As long as you hit the book, you'll be fine. Come on, the battery is gonna die on it. Come closer. Mona Lisa Paris was charged with second-degree manslaughter and was sentenced to 180 days in jail. If I die, I'll be ready for Jesus. He probably won't accept me into the pearly gates because how stupid this is. But I have confidence that my girlfriend will hit the book and not me. Before we continue, a few of you asked for ways to suggest topics or even format ideas. Please send any suggestions or ideas you have to your darkster commissions at outlook.com. All your boyfriends out here. Every job. Wait, 80, just like Joey. Got here. Just getting your way. For real. On March 15, 2023, a channel that goes by the name Mikhail White began uploading videos on the platform. While seemingly harmless in the beginning, the channel eventually became one of the darkest channels to ever exist on YouTube. Mikhail would initially upload random videos of himself, documenting his life as a homeless person. For one night, we'll all have that. For one night. Then you all can have that in the hands of the one night. For real. For real. Alright, put my face mask on. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for real. Alright, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. For real. No, I'm not recording, bro. Bro, niggas think I'm recording, bro, but I ain't recording, bro. It becomes evident from other videos that Mikhail is definitely consuming substances and might be under the influence at most times. He also sometimes goes on rants in his own comment sections. Sometimes you can't even understand what he's trying to convey. Hey. Good guy, we you over there. Yo, you said it. It, ain't me. it was a lot of people that me might be over there. In later videos, we can see Mikhail finding an almost destroyed abandoned house where he continued to spend most of his time. Yup, yup, yup. Exactly. Like stolen chips or something.
Mikael, who was struggling with homelessness, seemed to have found a place to live. But the living conditions are definitely bad. There were some changes in his behavior. He stopped going on rants in his own comment sections and seemed overall happier than before. Though everything would get dramatically worse on April 4, 2023. I'm off that motherfucking lane, bro. Bro, I got hands on my fucking fist, bro. For real. That's what you should be worried about. Walk away. That's what you should be worried about. What? That's what you should be worried Walk about. Away. That's what you should be worried about. You're too young, man. Yeah. Man. Yeah. But look at this though. Yeah, look, look. And my voice turned white in one day. And my voice turned white in one day. Honestly, where's Bonnie? Where's Bonnie? Where's Bonnie? Mikhail would upload a video that abruptly starts in the middle of a scene where a bunch of people are asking him to walk away. While it's hard to make sense of what's happening without context, the context will be provided in Mikhail's very next video. The video shows him walking in the sideways of a road when suddenly, out of nowhere, he began harassing a random stranger. And then he's waiting, and then he's waiting, and then he's waiting, and he's like, he's like, he's like, yeah. Hey, how, how you feel about people doing that, bro? With Cray Cray? Cray Cray, let the kid, the gay kitty, tell that kitty to get out. Tell that kitty to get out. That kitty. Yeah. Hell yeah, that kitty. It's just, it's just a kitty somewhere, it's just a kitty, tell him to get out. The man was trying to be polite and slowly walked away from Mikhail, but he'd go on to harass him repeatedly without any reason, eventually even getting physical. Hey sir! Hey sir! You, you can record this, you can, you can uh, record me to uh, tell, this, tell this girl to get that kitty out of my bad house. I mean this guy just cannot really fight, but I cannot show the entire thing here. A man would step in and attempt to, to stop the fight. However, it would only escalate the situation even further. Get away from him! Get away from what? He's older than you. Get away from who? Get away from who? What? Hey. What's up? He tried me bro! He tried me bro! He tried me bro! Fuck bro, he tried me bro! He tried me bro! He's doing a thing, he's trying to walk away from me. Keep your head. Walk yeah. away. Alright. Walk away. Yeah. Walk the fuck away. Yeah, alright. Walk away. Yeah. Yeah. Walk away. Yeah. Yeah, he tried right. me, bro. Walk he away. tried me, bro. Yeah. He tried me, bro. Hell yeah. For real. Yeah. For real. I cannot show the full thing, but at one point, the older gentleman fell down, and Mikhail started kicking him. While this was already pretty disturbing, the following stuff is significantly worse. On April 8, 2023, Mikhail uploaded a video with a weird title, showcasing him violently beating an elderly homeless man who was residing in the same abandoned house he had discovered earlier. In the beginning, two other men can be seen with Mikhail inside the abandoned house. One of them is seated on a chair facing downward, while the other is in a separate room. Without any apparent reason, Mikhail enters the room and starts harassing the old man. Although initially confused, the elderly man quickly becomes the target of Mikhail's physical assault, reaching the point where he starts to bleed. I cannot show anything here due to his graphic nature. It was genuinely painful to watch how Mikhail continued to beat the elderly man relentlessly. Towards the end, the old man just leaves and doesn't really react to anything Mikhail has to say. In the later part of the video, we can see some police officers standing right outside Mikhail's house, confronting him about the fight. Mikhail would blame everything on a cat. Yeah, man, that um, guy, he need an ambulance. Yeah, he need an ambulance. Uh, he just, yeah, that kid. Did y'all get into a fight? Nah. What happened? That kid, yeah, that kid. There's a cat over there. He, he this cat crazy. There's a crazy kid over there. Cat? What do you mean, like actual cat or another? No, there's a crazy cat over there. Like an animal? N yes, there's an animal. No, no, not no animal. There's a cat. There's a little cat, and he's crazy. Okay. Well, what happened? Did you? There's a crazy cat over there. He's fighting people. Okay. Where? Where'd he go? He see? He, I don't know. How'd you did it get you? You got blood on your hands. Yo, for real? Nah. Well, how'd you get blood on your hands? I don't know. Oh no. You don't know? Yeah, that kid he got to me too. Okay. Was yeah. You and this guy fighting? No. Nah. Him and the cat. Did you get nah. involved with it? No. Nah. Okay. Alright. Well, what's your name? I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm Mikael. I'm Mikael. I'm just gonna step past you. Yeah. Real quick, okay. Cool. Yeah. 
it seems like he didn't face any consequences for his actions, as he wasn't arrested, and continued to upload more videos on his channel until April 17, 2023, when he abruptly stopped. Although the channel Mikhail White has since gone inactive, Mikhail still uploads videos on a different channel called Scrappy Chan. This implies that he is still roaming free, despite being an obvious danger to others. Also, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date. The very first video on this channel shows a guy, possibly under the influence of a substance. The title of the video reads, Effects of Datura, Funny Stuff. Datura is a medical plant used as a substance and abused for recreational reasons, primarily in the US. The guy seems to be really young. Which way to go? What are you, an idiot? What are you, an idiot? Oh, that hurt. Uh oh. Let's go. The video begins with a woman face painting on the guy's face while he seems to be in a disoriented state. It is followed by people laughing and making fun of him. According to a commenter, the guy behind the camera is his brother. Don't feel bad for this guy. I went to school with him. He's done things like this and even worse to other people. The guy recording him is his brother. It's pretty interesting to see him so vulnerable. The camera follows him for a while, eventually entering another room with a much older man lying there in a seemingly similar state, presumably implying they are having a party. You alright? Jack? Buddy? Uh, huh? Uh, Jack, you okay? Uh, she didn't get a good thing of this cut. In total, there are five people in the video. It seems that they are family, and they often indulge in this activity. On May 7, 2010, the channel Noah Martin uploaded another video titled Morgellons Disease. Morgellons is an extremely rare condition in which the patient believes that there are bugs and objects under their skin, when in reality there is nothing. But the video shows nothing clearly. From what I could make out, they are possibly cutting out pieces of the man's skin, thinking they are worms. Honestly, I cannot show anything of the video itself because it's way too graphic, so I'll leave it to your imagination. I warn you though, it's extremely disgusting, so I suggest against looking this up. In the video itself, you can hear another man talking who is performing the surgery. He believes they are pulling out worms when, in reality, they are just cutting out pieces of the man's skin. It is also important to note that the surgery is being performed at home, so they most likely have no professional background in this, which makes it even more dangerous. It honestly reminds me of a Russian YouTuber who began performing surgeries on himself, plucking out cameras from his eyes. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out in episode 9 of the disturbing part of the internet series. Other videos on the channel are more or less the same, with different people performing the Morgellon surgery on Jack. If that isn't enough, What's worse is that they are performing the surgery without any anesthesia. The description of one of the videos reads, We are using no anesthetic. This is a government conspiracy to depopulate the planet. If that's not already crazy enough, the video is even crazier, claiming that he has those worms under his skin because of cam trails in the air. Well, okay. Hello to everyone out there in YouTube land. Here we are today going to um, do some surgery on some more gallons. They say Morgellons comes from uh, chemtrails. It's some pretty nasty stuff. You sure, you pretty much need to leave this stuff alone unless you're ready to dig it all the way out with pretty much no, no uh, anesthetic. And uh, so for everyone's benefit, uh, here we go. It's unclear if all of the substance abuse made him think this way or if he's just being misguided by his family. Maybe it's both. Or he just truly believes it. All right. Uh, hello, everyone out there in YouTube land. Uh, welcome to my nightmare. Tonight, uh, we're going to be working on some more gallons. Lesions, we're going to cut them out with no anesthetic. They say these things come from chemtrails, uh, a bunch of aluminum, and bioengineered uh, 
organisms of all sorts and uh, barium and something else I can't remember. But anyway, they say that 80% of the population will test positive whether they have the lesions or not. I guess we'll get started. The final video on the channel was uploaded on December 7, 2012, which was another surgery video. After that, nobody heard from Jack or Noah Martin until very recently, when another channel that goes by the same name confirmed that Jack just recently passed away. On the surface, this other channel seems uninteresting, but I found some really bizarre comments. A user asks, Recently a video came out about your first channel. There's a lot of speculation around what's happening in the videos and what happened after. I'm wondering if you could answer some questions some people have been asking. To which Noah Martin replied, Hello, this is Noah Martin, and no, we never used substances. I performed all of the surgeries. Yes, more gallons is real, but it wasn't more gallons I was cutting out of Jack. It was living organisms that would almost scream as they came out. Another user asks, So how did Jack die? Whatever became of the guy tripping on Datura? To which Noah replied, Jack died from organisms in the blood. Just type in Lama98579 on YouTube. I'll be making more surgery videos with another account. I couldn't find an account under that name. Though what this implies is that there may be more people in the family suffering from the same disease, which makes sense. They most likely delude each other in believing that this is real. In one of the comments, Noah himself confessed to performing surgeries on himself and cutting out organisms. It reads, Hey man, this is Noah. All is well, I still cut these organisms out of my skin every day. Just imagine someone who is also deluded stumbles across these videos and gets convinced to make the same type of surgeries. According to some commenters, they seem to believe it. The following topic is more on the sad side than really disturbing. Anthony ran a YouTube channel named Alrich Survivor, documenting his battle and journey with Rick Simpson oil. While the effectiveness is debatable, Anthony survived brain cancer three times and now wanted to try something besides traditional medicine. Hello, my name is Anthony and I spent over 40 hours wearing this mask to cure my cancer. But needless to say, it didn't help. <laughs> I am now a three-time brain cancer survivor. I was offered the opportunity to do some research on a gentleman by the name of Rick Simpson and his hemp oil that he has helped bring to light over the years of its healing powers and abilities to cure diseases that modern medicine has been unable to cure. He'd upload a total of 16 videos, mainly experimenting with the oil and telling us about the process and effectiveness. I was finally able to obtain my Rick Simpson oil. You're gonna witness my first dosage. I have chose to ingest my oil on a cracker for the first time. As you can see, I got my cracker, got my scale zeroed out. I'm gonna try to slowly put a half a gram on this cracker and then I'm gonna ingest it. He later changed the way he ingested it. He used the pill instead of a cracker because the taste was horrible. In terms of his overall condition, he mainly talked about his sleep and how his sleep has improved and that it was easier to fall and stay asleep. Though this didn't seem to be consistent. He also talked about how he felt more euphoric. In other videos, he'd respond to comments from viewers regarding the oil. A few issues started to pile up. Apparently, he heated up the oil wrongly, which caused side effects. Honestly, up until the very last episode, there weren't any real setbacks that he talked about. It was mostly neutral. In episode 16, he talks about how his tumor doubled in size. He talks about how he has to go back to chemotherapy. Hi again. Thanks for waiting. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Mine is kind of rough. I got my results back from my MRI. My tumor has doubled in size. The oil had no positive effects on the tumor. Kind of sucks. The day before my MRI, I threw up. The day of my MRI, I threw up three times in the morning. Pretty much just been throwing up on and off, dry heaving all weekend because I, you know, eat and then usually throw it right back up. The only thing I, I can do is try to shrink this tumor. Sadly, it's gotta be chemotherapy again. The last bit of this video really shows the severity of the situation. While he was always optimistic, you can clearly tell that he really is trying his best to maintain his composure. Um, oh. I was able to... In if anybody's interested in keeping up with me, just let me know.
Thanks for watching. Unfortunately, Anthony passed away. In episode 14, he asked us if his videos have any impact on future generations trying his treatment plan. While I cannot answer this question, I can for sure say that thanks to him uploading his journey on YouTube, he'll forever be remembered. You two stay on that corner. And this morning, exclusive body cam footage obtained by ABC News showing the moments police swarm Frankie's Utah home the day of her arrest on August 30th. Ruby Frank had a YouTube channel that went by the name Eight Passengers, where she documented her daily life and her parenting methods as a Mormon. While she quickly gained a large fan following, some people noticed that her behavior towards her children was really concerning, almost abusive. A change.org petition was launched, reporting perceived CA and neglect in her videos. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Ruby would take extreme measures to, quote, instill discipline in her children, like banning her teenage son from his bedroom and forcing him to sleep in a beanbag for seven months. What you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. <laughs> he was sleeping on a beanbag. Sleeping on a beanbag <laughs> October. Ruby would also not let her two kids enjoy Christmas, while the rest of the family celebrated. It took a really strange turn when she threatened to behead a soft toy in front of her daughter as she cried. To say that to a child is really, really strange. There was also evidence that Ruby tied up her own son. In one video, Ruby said, My kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm a mean barbarian, but I told the kids I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. And if you were curious about what Ruby's worst fear is, it's literally her waking up one day and her children not giving her content. Honestly, my biggest fear ever since I started vlogging was but what if I wake up and my children are just staring at a wall all day and there's nothing to film? That is legitimately my biggest fear. The abuse would continue until Ruby's 12-year-old son, Russell, climbed out of the window of the house, went to his neighbors and asked them to call the police. According to court documents, the boy had duct tape on his hands and feet, implying that he had been tied up. And I'm on the address of your emergency. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. We know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry and he's thirsty. And he asked us to call the police. What's so he's name? very afraid. This kid has obviously been... I think he's been... He's been detained. He's, been, he's obviously covered in wounds. We need the cops. Ruby and her business partner Jody Hildebrandt were arrested on six counts of aggravated CA on August 30, 2023. To my understanding, it's not yet fully determined how long the sentences will be, so we'll have to wait for that. Max Skillet was a YouTuber with nearly 750k subs and had a very successful CSGO skin business. Initially, everything was going well. He even bought a stream car and posted a video about it on his YouTube channel. Alright, what's going on guys? Maxkillage here with another video, but today I thought I would switch it up and just do a real life video because I've been seeing plenty of new car videos on YouTube for the longest time and people seem to like those videos, they seem to get a lot of views. However, in March of 2018, Valve, the developers of CSGO, released a new set of policies making it harder to trade CSGO skins, collapsing the skin market almost instantly. The developers even sent cease and desist letters to multiple CSGO skin gambling websites, forcing them to shut down. Max Skillet's website, CSGO Magic, also became a target and eventually closed. Skillet's $100,000 worth inventory was also banned because it was linked to bots. Skillet's primary source of income was cut off and it seemed like he had officially retired from YouTube. Though things turned out way worse than one could have expected. Information tonight about this fiery crash that killed three people and shut down the 805 for hours. The wrong way driver has been identified as YouTube and e-game star Trevor Heitman. Max Skillet, whose real name is Trevor Heitman, slowly went insane. Trevor had a highly successful business and being suddenly caught off guard with an abrupt ban took a heavy toll on him. He displayed all kinds of manic behavior including admitting to his mother that he drove his car at 150 miles per hour in a 25 miles per hour zone. 
When he got confronted, he'd reply by saying, neither the police nor their bullets could hurt me. While Trevor's behavior is dangerous for others and his own safety, nobody took any action until the 23rd of August 2023, when Trevor's family friend, who was also a psychiatrist, called 911, claiming that he is a danger to himself and others, and should therefore be detained. While the police would arrive at Trevor's house, they refused to take any action against him because of a lack of substantial evidence. There's a criteria. He has to be, he has to be gravely disabled. He has to have a credible threat against somebody. He has to have or harmful to his own self. There's only certain criteria that we can take him under. Who bought the car for him? Well, he bought it. He bought it? Is he bought a McLaren? Into dollars, yeah. At 18 years old? He's a very intelligent kid. He made $4 million in 10 months. Okay. Oh. So. He's got to teach me his ways. Not right now. <laughs> Letting him go would be a big mistake because hours later, Skillet would insist on leaving the house, taking his car with him, and even ramming his own father's vehicle to get out. Skillet would eventually crash into his own school fence, breaking it and losing control. When the staff tried to talk to him, he'd speed off. You know you're driving in a school zone, right? Here's cell phone video from a school in Carmel Valley. A man tries to talk to Heitman, but he speeds off. What did he just say? Something's wrong with him. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hi. Hi. You have a crazy on your campus right now, driving in a sports car, chasing after the kids. Finally, Skillet would go on a rampage, driving 100 miles per hour on the wrong side of a crowded San Diego County highway, eventually crashing into a SUV, killing 43-year-old Aileen Pizarro and her 12-year-old daughter Ariana. Skillet would also pass away on the spot. On Reddit, someone shared a post on the Scare Theater subreddit reading, In Lithuania, a 9-year-old girl was kidnapped three days ago. They suspected this guy making weird YouTube videos. The police said he wasn't the culprit, which a lot of people don't believe since his identity now is being hidden. And this is the video that was made a day before the crime. Mind you, he was filming in the same city where the kidnapping happened, and also uses a doll in the video, which might be subliminal messaging. Attached was a video, which has now been deleted by the channel owner itself. Actually, the entire channel has been deleted by themselves. As always, whenever I find a topic, I archive as much as possible. Therefore, let's go through certain things that were available. Taking a quick glance at the thumbnails, we see that there are multiple masked people and titles mentioning that it's a female mask, among other more explicit descriptions. OP talked about how there might be subliminal messaging going on in the videos. Before going deeper, let's have a look at the videos. As you can see in the footage, there are a few scenes where we can see two adults. One looks like an adult, while the other depicts a child. A third person is posing next to the adult doll, and is never seen in the same frame as the child. Without the given context from OP, I would have just dismissed this channel as an art project or some sort of fetish. However, given the fact that merely days after the Reddit post, the channel was deleted, makes it at least a bit more unlikely that this is just an art project or a stunt to garner attention. If it was merely for garnering a big audience, then you'd keep the channel up. The speculation that they might have to hide something doesn't seem that far-fetched anymore. OP added two more comments, reading, He also films a lot of his videos in a garage, and the abducted girl was found in a garage, and he has literally made a video called Female Possession Equals Feta Fox. Found a new news article about this, so the man's identity is set on the page, 
But in the news clip, the police said they couldn't confirm nor deny that the man that was filming these Faita Fox videos was the kidnapper or not. It was also said that he owned a lot of garages, which could explain the multiple videos of him being in garages. The strange part is that this article has also now been deleted and there was no archive on way back, so I can't tell what it exactly said. There is a different article, however, which shows the guy behind the mask. I won't share his identity here, because while he might be somewhat suspicious, I haven't seen any hard evidence that this guy is behind this crime. Unfortunately, I don't speak the language, so I had to work with the translation, and from what I'm able to understand, the police seems to have immediately dismissed this person as a possible suspect. The article then just talks about how all of this seems to be some form of fetish, detailing that most videos are very explicit in nature, and that it might be harmful to children to view this content, and questions whether this content should be available on YouTube. Anyway, returning back to the videos, the guy wasn't exactly careful with what he showed. A lot of locations can be geolocated, and multiple license plates were shown in the videos, so definitely wasn't a huge effort to identify this guy. There are Facebook pages that date back to 2018 and 2019. They didn't have much or any content on there. After the deletion of the channel, there were numerous channels created at the same time who were re-uploading the content of the channel. It's possible that it's the same guy re-uploading those, but it's also possible that it's someone else. Other channels are from years ago, and definitely seem to be from the guy himself. I might be missing crucial context here, but so far I haven't seen anything that convinces me of this guy actually being behind an abduction. However, there must be a reason why people in Lithuania believe this. If anyone in the audience has a better understanding of the situation, feel free to add additional context in the comments down below. If you've missed the previous episode, click here to see it. Thank you all for supporting the channel on Patreon. I really appreciate that. 